do you love personality tests as much? Let's try that again. <laughs> do you love personality assessments as much as I do? Have you taken all the tests? Have you looked at yourself from every angle? Things like Strengths Finder, the Temperaments, DISC, Berkman, all the things. If you are into assessments, you are going to love this podcast episode because I am talking about an assessment that has changed my life in the incredible, I think, six days that I took it. <laughs> And why I think everyone should take the M code assessment. And I'm going to share a special way that you can get your hands on this very powerful tool as well. That's what's going on today on the Possibility Mom Live. <laughs> Today, I'm coming at you from my mom and dad's house in North York, Ontario, Canada. And I want to start this episode with just a few words of thanks. My last episode was episode 100. 100 episodes, 100 ways that we have grown in connection, where we have explored and expanded upon things like Catholic uh, moms being in business like what it looks like to develop as a mom, to do motherhood well, what it looks like to heal from um, trauma and from baggage and what it looks like to truly just grow in holiness and become the best versions of ourselves and bring our families and those around us that we are called to love and serve along with us. And so many of you have reached out that you loved episode 100 with my dear friend and special guest, Jennifer Zambiel of Together Moments. We just got really tender on that episode and talked about the kinds of seeds that you plant with your family now and will grow over time, like for years to come. And you don't always see the fruits of those things now. Um, it was a particularly tender episode. So I want to encourage you, if you have not listened to that episode, go back to episode 100 and give that a listen. I'm, I'm so grateful for all of the messages of encouragement. Today, I want to talk about an assessment that kind of got put on my lap that I'm not going to lie. I was a little bit like, oh, another assessment, like another way <laughs> to learn about myself, another way for me to nerd out and get really obsessed. I was, I was a little bit like, do I really need another assessment to get excited about? And I learned about this assessment from my dear friends, Matt and Aaron Ingold over at Metanoia Catholic, who just did a really compelling series on God's will in your life. And they use this particular assessment as a tool um, to uh, help people understand, okay, well, what, what is the Lord asking you to do? And so very briefly, today in this podcast, I want to share with you this tool, why it is so great. <laughs> I'm going to share with you the personal stories that I wrote that uh, have, have, are part of the assessment, and I'll get into that in just a minute. And then offer you a special invitation if you are excited to learn more about yourself and want to go on this journey that I have been on uh, with this assessment, a really special way that you can access it. So let's start at the very beginning. This is called the M code assessment. Let me know in the comments if you're listening to this live. Have you done this type of assessment before? Um, and what did you think? What are your results? And so I'm just going to read straight from the website. What is the M code assessment? And how is it different from things like StrengthsFinder, Myers-Briggs, DISC, Enneagram, any of the personality assessments that exist out there? So straight from the website. Most personality assessments lead with labels they choose, and every question you're asked is used to stick you in a predefined, determined or predefined box 
that aligns with what they think is important. You've likely taken these personal, uh, I'm so sorry, I cannot read today. You've likely taken several of these personality assessments and when answering questions, thought to yourself, it depends. And that's the problem. If you'd answer a question differently based on the day or how you're feeling at the time, you can't be sure the results are accurate and truly reflective of who you are. This is why most of the results are only sort of accurate and sort of relevant and why it comes to actually applying those results in a meaningful way even more fall short. M code flips the script and keeps the focus solely on you, your stories of success and achievement, how you felt about those life experiences. It's the only narrative based personality assessment that uses your own personal stories, which makes every question asked and the results directly relevant to your work and life. Another big difference is the focus of the assessment itself. Other personality assessments focus only on your strengths and weaknesses. The M-Code assessment focuses on your motivations, the why that powers your actions, preferences, and decisions. By uncovering what drives you, we learn about who you are, what makes you unique, how you contribute value to those around you, what inspires you to do your best work, and how you interact with people whose motivations differ from your own. Your unique M code also highlights what you're great at and not so great at and the types of environments where you'll either struggle or thrive. So that's straight from the M code website. I went on a deep dive, <laughs> like I typically do. I get pretty excited and kind of nerdy about things. Um, if you're familiar with the uh, Strength Finder Strengths, I have input. I love to gain knowledge and then share it with others. So of course, I had to go on this deep dive, gain knowledge journey with all of you. <clears throat> and I learned, and it was so fun also because when I started talking about this a little bit to my email list and to my social media, people started to reach out and say, hey, did you know that this was developed over 50 years by a generation of families, like, like just three generations in a family? And so I learned that part of the, the, the family that developed it is Dr. Joshua Miller, who is the co-founder of Inscape with Luke Burgess, which some of you may know. Um, I've talked about, uh, if you go back to my episode with um, uh, Grady, oh, forgive me, Grady O'Connell, I'm pretty sure is his full name, uh, who was a student at the Catholic University of America. We talked a little bit about what they're doing over there. So they co-founded the um, Inscape which really goes into personal vocations. And so if I understand this correctly, Dr. Joshua Miller, who is on the staff at Franciscan University um, and where this center, um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, exists. Uh, he also helped to build the Center of Leadership, leader, uh, Center for Leadership at Franciscan University of Steubenville. Um, and he's currently the vocation coach and vocation coach trainer for faculty and staff of the institution. I find this all so, so interesting. He really, what the, the, so apparently it was his father and his grandfather over 50 years of research went into developing the M code and the big difference is stories. So other personality tests, you kind of like measure this on a scale of one to 10 or, or what have you. This test consists of three simple elements. Number one, you write in stories. Like you write in a personal story. How cool is that? They ask you to do four stories um, and help you to, um, uh, or, or they, they, they ask you to just find four stories where you experienced so much fulfillment. Okay, that's the first test. Set, or not test, first, first step. <laughs> the second step um, in this all is then you're answering questions on a scale of one to 10 um, based on that specific story that you told. Now, I have no idea how they do this. It's got to be AI. Like there's got to be some AI. But basically, you write your story. It's about maybe 
three to four short sort of paragraphs long, right? They give you some prompts to tell the story. And then you're answering a whole bunch of questions. Why were you motivated? Was this really important to you that you were um, the key player in this? Um, you know, how much fun did you have? And, and this is where you're answering a scale of one to 10. That's the part that I'm fascinated by because obviously there's some AI involved, right? Because they're, 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 they're churning out these questions instantly. You write your story and specific questions pertinent to your story are being presented to you. So fascinating. And then you're ranking them, you're rating them one through 10. And then they, of course, uh, pro pro uh, provide to you your M code assessment, which is five things that they share with you. And I'm going to share with you my personal stories as well as what my motivations are that reveal your motivations. And what I have found so enlightening about this whole thing of all the assessments I have ever taken, I have never felt so seen on a piece of paper. This M code assessment clarified for me <laughs> all the reasons why I love to get out of bed in the morning, all the reasons why I feel some dread or certain challenges around um, certain activities in my life. It helped me clarify on paper so concretely What's the kind of work I want to do all day, every day? And what do I either need a lot of support in or I need to avoid completely? And it just, you know, I honestly, I cried when I read my own responses because I felt the significant source of freedom. I just felt like, wow. <laughs> First of all, I think I'm pretty cool on paper. But secondly, it just made me feel this sense of, there is a personal mission. There is something that I am so uniquely called to do, and there's a unique way I'm going to do it. So if any of you struggle with imposter syndrome, if you struggle with feeling like other people can do this so much better, if you struggle with feeling like you should know better, or you should be doing something better, or you should be different. If you struggle with any shame or doubt, if you notice that the enemy attacks you particularly around comparison or feeling like you're just not good enough because of X, I want you to take this assessment <laughs> and be able to see so clearly in front of you, this is who I am. This is who God has uniquely made me. These are the unique strengths that I bring to an organization. These are the unique strengths that I bring to my marriage, to my family. And, and, and just simply be able to start viewing everything through this lens of personal vocation. This is what I am called to do. I don't know why this gets me so emotional. And I think it's because... I know the feeling and I coach a lot of women who feel like they should be something other than what they are. And that's just it. Whether it's like, I'm too loud, so I should be quiet, or I'm too quiet, so I should be more loud, or I have a tendency to take charge of situations. And of course, you hear me talk about this all the time. We all need to grow in virtue all the time. That's like a non-negotiable. We all need to go to confession all the time. That's a non-negotiable. Again, none of this is sort of, uh, none of this is without that very important lens in mind, right? We need to constantly be um, reflective of sin in our lives and how we can grow, how we can grow in virtue. So great big fat caveat. But coupled with that, when you know your motivations, it can just help you save time, save energy. For those of you who are working mamas, it can help you to just stay in the lane that's going to give you so much energy and excitement so that when you are returning to your family, 
you are full, you are overflowing, and you're able to offer that to them instead of feeling so drained every day by what you're doing. Conversely, especially if you are a mom building her business and the margins of her motherhood, this will help you to have a sense of what activities should I be doing? What activities should I be delegating? What activities maybe are just not even going to make it onto my plate right now? I just can't say enough how convicted I feel that gaining this kind of clarity through all of these assessments, but particularly the M code, this M code has, again, I have done almost every single assessment known to man. <laughs> I'm sure there's a few that I don't know about, but uh, I just have done so many. And I just feel so convicted that this is a really beautiful specific piece of that pie that can help you immensely um, gain so much clarity. Alrighty. So like I said, there's three components. You input four stories and where you felt fulfillment. You answer several questions that help you to assess different factors in, in your particular story. And then it helps you to see, it gives you an assessment around your motivations and helps you to see how you will thrive and where you will feel challenged. Okay, so I'm going to start with my stories and then I'm going to share with you what my assessment told me in terms of how I am motivated. And then I'm going to share with you how you can get your hands on this assessment in a really special way. Okay, so there were four stories that I shared on my M code assessment. And essentially the question is just, it's a very open-ended question. Where did you feel fulfilled? And let me just read you what they were. So from my assessment, your achievement stories power your M code results. They also provide valuable context for understanding the personal insights within this report. Here are the stories you shared while completing the assessment. So story number one, I recently planned a three-day live event for an organization called Guiding Star. I had Leah Jacobson on my podcast not too long ago where we were talking about holistic feminism. And it was uh, the impetus of this event was to launch a brand new membership community for them to help them fundraise in an ongoing way. It involved understanding the messaging of the organization, which I was familiar with, but not totally clear on. So it involved a lot of understanding exactly what Guiding Star does, what its long-term goal, long goals are, and then creating content that best reflected their core values, generating visibility for the organization. I got involved in this because I believe in the mission and I want this group to succeed. And it was particularly enjoyable to me because I love the challenge of creating something new. And then I love the challenge of making money for a cause that I believe in. And it is, I find it very satisfying to take nothing and then make it into something. Story number two was very similar to story number one. I, along with my business partner, Stephanie Donahue, hosted a five-day event for um, teaching Catholic moms how to grow a six-figure business and beyond. It was an incredibly successful event on so many fronts, and lots of people took action on their business. Um, I got involved in this because this is a core offering of my business. We use this to launch my mastermind. And it's something I have wanted to refine and launch at this caliber for a while. So I've wanted to do a live style of event teaching people the components of a sustainable business for a long time. And I really wanted to do it at the highest caliber possible. So what was enjoyable about this, I love changing people's lives. It was a very, it was very fulfilling to see people have big light bulb moments around their own capabilities. I love helping people to see, you know, 
it might be possible for you to do this. It might look totally different than you thought it would look, but it might be entirely possible for you as a Catholic mama with a bunch of kids at home to make money online. And um, I love helping people to demystify limiting beliefs, limiting beliefs around making money and limiting beliefs around shame and guilt around pursuing something like this. And in fact, that starting a business can actually be for the glory of God and it can actually be for your sanctity and that success in business is holiness. The third story that I shared was I recently got to speak to a group of about 200 women, uh, to a, a group in London, Ontario. And it was super fun for me to coach live in front of this huge group. Um, I had an incredible time speaking to women after the event, and I was able to sell books after the event. I love speaking and coaching live. I particularly love coaching live. I, so this was what was part of the activity that I found very enjoyable. There is something thrilling about using my gifts in this unique way. Like when you're live, you're live. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if you're stumped, you're stumped and you're stumped in front of 200 people. I love the challenge of doing that. And it was a day of meaningful connection. I really, really loved connecting with all of the women who were there. And I love, again, helping people to break through what they think is potentially not possible and help them to see different avenues. And then my fourth story was a little bit different. I talked about how we recently got our home in Florida, in Ave Maria, Florida, ready to become a vacation rental, like ready for long-term rent. And to do that, there was a lot of moving parts. Like if you had seen my carpet before, oh my word, it had, um, you know, what's that stuff called? Um, where it's really sticky. It's like slime. Yeah, slime. It had slime like in the carpet. It had those things that you get in loot bags. Oh my word. Maj Majs, I think they're called. <sighs> those things drive me bananas. If you are a personal friend of mine, please refrain from putting Maj Majs <laughs> in loot bags. If you don't know what a Maj Maj is, don't even bother Googling it. They're these sticky things that nobody needs in their lives. It had mosh mosh stains all over the walls because they would stick them there and then they leave this like residue. It had fingerprints, like paint marks. It just had stuff everywhere and no way it could become a vacation rental property. And so there were a lot of moving parts, um, a lot of money to kind of figure out and move around. There was just a lot to do. And I was particularly fulfilled that we got it ready in a fairly short amount of time. And some of it we did without me even being there. So some of it was done like virtually, like while we were in Canada. Um, and it was super fun to face this challenge and some of the strategic decisions all while managing the life of my nine kids. And we did it all around Christmas time. It was a little bit bananas. But why I found this enjoyable or satisfying is was it was just a very large challenge on all fronts with a very strict timeline and a strategic budget and i worked hard and around the clock to get it done and i was very satisfied with the final outcome those are my stories and here is what my particular stories tell me my motivation code is so i'm gonna go through them and I like love them so, so much and they just make me so, so happy. And so I am excited to share them with you. I hope as you hear them, it, it um, helps you to get to know me a little bit better. I really, as I said, I've never taken something that so clearly reflects me on paper. My motivation, my M code number one is to evoke recognition. You are motivated to capture the attention and interests of others. What, how evoke recognition often shows up, your focus is on gaining visibility. You identify angles that will enable you to attract others. You are motivated by an audience's reaction to what you say and do, and you heighten the awareness of a person or cause of an individual or organization. I'm not going to lie. 
when I read this one, I both chuckled and also felt a little bad <laughs> because pride is just, I've been fairly transparent in other podcasts. Pride is something I struggle with. And so this both makes sense to me, but also I was like, oh, <laughs> this is why I struggle so much because I love evoking recognition. So I found, I found that very, very, very interesting. But essentially, what, what does it know about me? What do we know about you as a result of evoke recognition? I love to raise recognition for causes or the right companies. I love to um, tap into the aesthetic and eternal to impact others. And what I love about this assessment, it also says what you'll thrive in. So you will thrive in environments where um, competition allows for striving and thriving, where marketing can be measured, where there's a performance element. And I just, again, reading this and knowing this is my number one, I was like, oh my gosh, this is why you love like this podcast. This is why you love, you know, um, being live all the time. Three out of my four stories that I shared involved elements of me being live. And so that was really, 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 really interesting. Um, you know, like there were things, so you may struggle in environments where the contribution isn't easily measured. I found that was really, really interesting. And it shares with you ways that you need to watch out for the flip side to watch out for. Um, because you have a passion for standing out, you tend to lose awareness of how others need to shine too. So these are, this is just very, very, very fascinating. That was my number one, evoke recognition. My number two is you are motivated to realize the vision. You take a vision or concept and make it reality. You're an imagineer. You make ideas come to life. You are practical. You envision what is possible. You have big ideas and you seek to operationalize visions and you like to implement. You make things happen. And this is what, again, I just, I read these and I could cry. What we know about you, you make the dreams of others come to life. That is such a motivator for me. When I coach on Mondays and I can help a person one call at a time, make their vision of more money for their family and more impact in the world come to life, you better believe like that is why I get on even when I'm not feeling well. That's when I how I can get on when I'm nauseous and pregnant. Oh, I just love it so much. <laughs> you help others refine their ideas. You stay grounded in the reality of what's actually possible. You thrive in environments where brainstorming and the execution stage are important, where dreams become a larger reality. You may struggle where you are responsible for mundane tasks or maintenance. Like, oh, reading that again, I already, I mean, I knew that very well about myself, but to understand why I don't feel motivated to do mundane tasks, of which there are many in a business, is again, just so motivating. And you can, what's so fun about these assessments is I can share this on a piece of paper with clients I work with, you know, with, with organizations, with teams that I get involved in. That is what is so motivating to me about the clarity that can come. And I read on their website that they are developing um, a beta program for teams using this uh this assessment um, so that you can understand what motivates your teammates. Um, you know, they're, they're <laughs> the flip side is you are susceptible to disappointment or discouragement when ideas or initiatives do not come to fruition. That is very, that is very, very, very true. All right. My third M code revelation is you are motivated to excel. You are motivated to give your absolute best as you exceed performance and expectation. So I thrive on competition. <laughs> you embrace challenges that have a clear shot at going beyond the requirements. Uh, you seek superlatives. You want to be the best, the fastest, the most. You are motivated to go above and beyond people's expectations. Excel. We know that you contribute as a high performer. You break through perceived limitations and barriers. You set a standard for meaningful and healthy competition, and you raise the bar on quality and set new standards. You will thrive in environments where exceeding expectations is rewarded, where high quality is the brand, and you will struggle when excellence isn't essential. You have a flip side to watch out for. You can come across as extremely competitive. <laughs> 
<laughs> resulting in unnecessary, unrealistic standards. Excuse me. My fourth revelation in the M code assessment is you are motivated to maximize. You are determined to get the most out of something or someone making things as successful or great as possible. How this shows up, pushing, driven to achieve maximum results, greater, seeks to make things greater than they already are, limitless, ability to maximize people and opportunities for optimal outcomes and expand, see how to make anything bigger and better. Um, what we know about the maximizer, you set high goals for yourself and others to aspire to. You take things to the highest level. You elevate possibilities beyond the status quo. You inspire others to be their best. You thrive in environments where expanding operations is important, where having an impact and growth is welcomed, where goals and ideals are oriented towards optimal results. And you'll struggle where <laughs> there is an aversion to risk or change, where incremental growth is the strategy. I do not like incremental growth. I accept it. It's necessary. But I'm like big. I want big. Give me big. And the flip side is, of course, it can be overly ambitious, setting unfounded and ungrounded goals, leaving others disappointed or disgruntled. And then finally, my fifth one is you are motivated to persuade. You are motivated to influence someone's thoughts, feelings, or behavior. How this shows up, you engage and influence people. You are sensitive to the dynamics of behavior and adept at getting through to people. You are interested in both short-term and long-term responses, and you like to evoke a change in thoughts, feelings, or behavior. What we know about you, you promote a way of seeing a new reality. How many times did I say that in my stories? You change minds and hearts. You bring continuity and unity to ideas. You promote favorable impressions and outcomes. You will thrive in environments where the flow of interaction and ideas matter, where there is an openness to change, allowing for new ways. And you will struggle where um, there is not an established culture and values are not prominent. And this has a, you have a flip side to look out for where you might have a tendency to oversell your ideas and that actually might be distracting to the work. So my friends, I think that this is, like I said, the best, <laughs> the best assessment I have ever taken because I believe that it can provide such a clear picture of who you are, how you will show up, what will get you out of bed, what will help you uh, to feel motivated to contribute. And I really just feel like everybody needs to take this assessment. And clearly M code feels the same way because they have an offering where there uh, you can, uh, there's an offering where coaches like me can offer this to their people. And so of course, when I read about that, I was like, sign me up, here we go, take all my money so that I can offer this to as many people as possible. So to anyone who is a client of mine, you can take this assessment absolutely Free. So if you are currently in my Wealth Without Guilt community, if you are currently in my Motherhood Without Guilt community, you are welcome to take this assessment. A link has already been posted in your community groups um, for those two groups. And if you want to take this assessment and get the added benefit of a coach who can help you to reflect back what they see inside of this, I, just for clarity. I'm not affiliated with the M code. I've not been trained in their methodology. All I mean is that if you would like somebody to take your assessment and reflect back what I see, you get the added benefit of doing that when you are one of my clients. And so for the month of June, I'm offering this at no additional charge. You get to get to gain access to this assessment completely for free for the month of June when you sign up to be part of my Wealth Without Guilt Academy or my Motherhood Without Guilt Academy. And the links to join me inside of those two communities is in the description wherever you are watching this. Why do I care so much about this? Why do I care so much about personality tests? You know, and, and it's interesting. I was at a I was at a sort of intimate event about a year ago or so where we were all just like 
sitting around, um, you know, in this, in this sort of like quiet setting and I couldn't help but overhear a conversation because it was, it was a quiet setting. Um, I could, I couldn't help but overhear a conversation that was happening where people were talking about personality tests and they were like, oh no, no, like that's, it's not Catholic to take a personality test. Now, big caveat, there are some personality tests that we do need to be a little careful of. Okay. I'm not going to like dissect them all, but in general, we want to make sure that these are founded um, in ways that line up with our Catholic beliefs and are not sort of appealing to any spiritual practices that just are not in line with our um, with our worldview of there only being one God, <laughs> the one God, the true God. So, you know, there are the big caveat, we do need to ensure that the kinds of tests we're taking. But there are many tests that are science-based, science and social science-based, psychology-based, where it's just straight up science looking at human behavior. And I believe that the more clarity we have around ourselves, the more that grace can build upon nature. Because then with all this clarity, we can set ourselves up for success. So we can put ourselves in situations where we know we'll be motivated, where we know that our God-given unique potential is going to be activated. You know, I love when Jen Fulweiler, when she published the book, Blue Flame, I, I love the analogy she uses there. Like your blue flame is that center of the flame. It's not just the sparks that are kind of like orange. It's that center, the deepest part, the part that is hot, like so hot that it is blue. It's the part that keeps things going. And that's what I really saw here in this assessment. This reveals to you so clearly, more clearly than any assessment I have ever taken in my life. That what I read today in this podcast is me to the T. And how I'm applying this in my own life is essentially like, particularly I'm thinking about how can I be live more? Like just that, just very simply, how can I be live more? where me being live, so me hosting things, for example, where, um, you know, conferences, like anywhere that I can engage and interact with people live is a part of the experience, is a part of the work, I know I'm going to be really motivated. I don't know, and you might be asking yourself, or maybe you're not, but, you know, why does it matter if I'm motivated? Well, I think we all know that feeling of like, I am so motivated. Like, and you feel almost that spark, that blue flame. Like you just can go and go and go where time flies, where you are in flow. And I think we all know the feeling of, oh, this is the worst. Why am I doing this? You know? And yes, of course, power made perfect. Like we, we can be uh, where we are weak. Of course we can be strengthened. And there's so much opportunity to grow in virtue 100%. But it's, it's, to me, it's more about, am I being a good steward of the time that I've been given? Particularly if I only want to work in really specific pockets so that I can be really available to my children and to my husband and to others, you know, in the world. It's like, you better believe I'm not going to be doing drudgery, like mundane tasks, like my assessment told me that make me feel so drained where I feel like time is only <laughs> like tr like dredging along, like just like really slowly dredging along. Whereas if my time is so limited to work because I choose it, like I don't want to work all the time, you better believe I'm going to do stuff that gives me so much energy. I, just final note I'll, I'll make on this and it's around nausea and pregnancy. I'm currently pregnant with baby number 11 and I, as I get older in my advanced maternal age, my doctors and nurses like to remind me of this all the time. Oh yes, you're a geriatric pregnant. <laughs> you're geriatric pregnant. Um, as I go through a pregnancy in my advanced maternal age of 39, my body is just sort of like it has been through a lot. And so I feel all kinds of different pains and different 
aches and, you know, let's not even talk about my pelvic floor. Like, you know, there's all kinds of things that are, um, maybe that was a little TMI, I'm sorry, <laughs> but just my body has done a heroic amount of work to grow and develop 11 babies. And I often get asked, well, how do you do things in your first trimester when you're really sick? And the answer is simply, I am just so motivated when I'm in the things that I'm motivated in. And this M code assessment, I basically desire to stay in this like 80% of the time. I, I think it's inevitable that there are going to be things that we need to do that do require us uniquely. Like you can't delegate everything, right? There are going to be things that just you simply cannot delegate. And they are going to be outside of that, you know, M code. Like they are going to be outside of that motivation. But if you can, back to this nausea and first trimester type of thing, if you can find this, the things that you are so motivated by that they can even motivate you through nausea where you almost forget for a moment, or even if you feel it, it it's maybe is not as bad. At least that's my personal experience. When I'm doing things that I'm really motivated to do, it actually helps me take my mind off of my physical symptoms and makes me feel incredibly alive. And that's the point. That's the point of these assessments. Give you this clarity so that grace can build upon nature and you can do the thing that you are called uniquely to do. Uh, Dr. Joshua Miller and Luke Burgess, they have a book called, and I, forgive me, I'm going to just pull it up because I have forgotten the name but they have a book that they have written together that I think is so interesting. It's called Unrepeatable. And I just wanna read for you the description for this book. Because this unrepeatable life, cultivating the unique calling of every person, understanding that we are truly unique and that you have your own motivational design. You have your own pattern. That's the other thing that's so interesting about this M code is that it doesn't change. You've had this motivation as a young child and the research that they present is that this, this does not like, this does not go away. It does not alter, you know, what motivated you as a small child is going to continue to motivate you in your adulthood. And I just think that is so fascinating and compelling. I want to close out this podcast today with a prayer that the InScape Center has uh, published. And you can go learn about the InScape Center. It's InScapeCenter.org. And they have a prayer for personal vocation that I just thought would be so beautiful for us to pray right now. So if you'll join me in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Father of mercy, you called every creature into being and continue to call them to yourself through your son, Jesus Christ. You call each person in a special way from the first moment of existence to an unrepeatable vocation, to be a priest, prophet, and king of all creation, to a personal mission that only he or she can fulfill in order to attain eternal life with you for all eternity. Lord, we beg you to grant us the graces that we need to continually discover, embrace, and live our unique personal vocations. As we live out our vocations, grant us the grace to help others live out their callings as we live out our own so that the church may be a place where all people can flourish according to their unique personal vocation in the world. When we doubt, increase our faith in your loving design. When we are weary, strengthen us with the hope of heaven. When we fail to respond fully, have mercy on us and call us anew, so that filled with holy desire that surpasses every human longing, we may respond with all our minds, all our strength, all our heart to your eternal love, that each of us may become who we are. We ask this through your son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. My friends, if you want to get your hands on this um, M code assessment, this powerful, powerful assessment tool, you can go to their website. Their website is um, motivationcode.com, but I'm making it available through this very special offer that M code created for coaches like me. I'm making it available to my clients, anyone who is a part of my Wealth Without Guilt or Motherhood Without Guilt Academies, and you can find the links to join me. I'm only going to do this during the month of June, so you've got till the end of the month to join me inside of my communities. I honestly think this is the best $49 you could invest in your personal development, even if you come into my communities for just one month, I would encourage you to do so so you can get your hands on this assessment. And there's been some fun conversations inside of my community groups about this assessment. So go grab it. I would love to see you in there. I want to herald you, champion you. Let's get you doing exactly what the Lord has called you to do. All right, my friends, everybody, you are welcome. Thank you. I'm on, on uh, Facebook. Thank you, Lisa Canning. You're the best. You're so sweet. Thank you so much for that. It's my pleasure to follow my personal vocation, which has become so, so clear. I almost want to frame this thing and just constantly remind myself, this is what you are called to do and just cut out all the other noise and and continue to be um, very, 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 very clear. All righty, my friends. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much for joining me.